Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm here with a really exciting phone. This time it's the Asus Republic of Gaming Phone 5. And I've never had one of these before. I've wanted one since they first came out. I like to play games on phones, as I'm sure most of you who are watching this probably do as well. So it's always been exciting to me. I've got an Asus Republic of Gaming laptop. They've been around making some great stuff for a long time. And I finally took the dive with this one. Lots of cool stuff though, Snapdragon 888. I got the baseline one with eight gigs of RAM, 144 hertz refresh rate, and it's got dual stereo speakers, it's got lots of great things, and we're gonna talk about it in this video because this is, of course, the unboxing and first impressions. But before we get all that, I do wanna say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Let's take a look at this cool gaming phone. So here we are with the new Republic of Gaming phone number five. So this is the latest one that just came out. It's a normal one. This is not the ultimate. It's not the pro. I have the eight gig of RAM version with 128 gigs of storage. Let's go ahead and take it out of the box. This is actually my first time ever having one of these Republic of Gaming phones. And I've been interested in them for a very long time. It's just never worked out for me to be able to get one. So I, I got this one on eBay actually and I paid like 750 bucks or something like that. So not a bad deal overall. This is pretty cool here. Got the graphic art on the inside of the box. For those who dare, this whole pixelated thing they've got going on here. Let's see what's in the box. Oh, they got their own custom SIM ejector tool. Got this hard shell case, which it's nice that it comes with this. I haven't seen really a whole lot of stuff on the internet about the regular Republic of Gaming phone. It's like all the reviewers got the Ultimate Edition. I couldn't even find information on this to, to figure out if I wanted to buy it. <laughs> so uh, hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Got the documentation in here, all that good stuff. And here's the phone. This sucker's heavy. This is a lot heavier than I expected it to be. I guess, I mean, since it is a gaming phone high end, I mean, it probably would be a heavy phone. So take this off and voila, not too shabby. Certainly a nice looking phone. I really wanted the white one, but they were all sold out of that one. So I ended up buying this one. Got the camera set up on the back here. Nice rounded edges, power button, volume rocker. Got the ROG branding even right here. Pretty nifty. Headphone jack, so you've got that covered. You've got the USB-C port down there. You've also got one. I think there's another one. Yeah, right here. There we go. Got another USB-C port and also the connector there as well. Certainly a nice looking phone. Let's press the power button. Fire it up. Go. Powered by Android. I'm going to go ahead and put this case on it because I don't want to scratch it up. At least this will keep it up off the ground so it doesn't get scratched. That's cool. All right, now inside of the box we have a gigantic charger. Wow, 65 watt max charger. So they actually give you the high speed charger. That's nice. Got this braided nylon cable, USB C to USB C, and oh, an additional little port cover. So that was, that was nice of them to include that in there. And that's pretty much it for the unboxing experience. And certainly is a sharp looking phone. So let me go ahead and get this set up and we'll come back and take a look at it. So say hello to the really cool Asus Republic of Gaming phone number five. You're not missing something here. There was no four. They went one, two, three, and then five. I think five because it's supposed to have 5G. Mine doesn't get 5G. I got the international model. For whatever reason, it doesn't work with 5G here on the T-Mobile network for me. Maybe one day I can get that figured out, but I jumped the gun and I bought one off of eBay. And I was really excited wanted to get my hands on it. I wanted the white one. It comes in this black color and also a white color. Let me go ahead and take this case off just so you get a better feel. It does come with this case inside the box though. So it's like a protective case that goes over it. It doesn't really give you like 
a whole lot of protection, but it does keep the important areas open. The little LED area here on the back, this actually lights up, this little pixelated LED area. You got the camera set up here on the back as well, and it takes decent pictures. I mean, nothing too crazy to write home about, but it's a gaming phone. I'm not gonna ding it too much on that. It's basically the same cameras as the ROG3, and the ROG3 phone got a lot of like thumbs up. A lot of people really liked the cameras on it, but then it kind of got dinged for this phone because, well, they didn't really make a whole lot of improvements. So I'm not too heartburned in that area though. I, I didn't get this phone for that. But I will say, having taken a look at this phone, I like it a lot. It's got a lot of really cool things. It's got their own UI on here. It's got some cool graphics and skins. Like look, whenever you unlock it, it does a little graphic with the Republic of Gaming. So it's got some cool things in here. Really smooth, cool looking on the back. And yeah. It's got a Snapdragon 888 processor. It's got eight gigs of RAM. Of course, they do have a 12 gig version. I think a 16. You can get one with more storage as well. This one has the baseline 128. I really didn't have too much of a problem with that. I got it for like 750 bucks brand new on eBay. So I wasn't gonna complain too much other than I just couldn't get the white one. Now there is the ultimate one, which costs a lot more money, has a, a lot of the gadgets and stuff with it. And is very cool. But at the heart of the phone, I really didn't see that I needed to spend that extra money because it's gonna do the same thing. It's still got a Snapdragon 888. It's got the same screen. It's got the same 144 hertz refresh rate. So I'm like, that's good enough for me. I don't need 18 gigs of RAM, neither do you, or 16 for that matter. So yes, the phone does have a little bit of a of weight to it. Whenever I first took it out of the box, I'm like, this thing is a little on the hefty side. It's, But I mean, it's a gaming phone. I think I would be disappointed if it were like super light. So I don't really have a problem with the weight. Full 1080p plus resolution. It's got a 6.78 inch display on here, so almost 6.8 inches. It's a very, very large phone, and it's great for gaming. It's got a 64 megapixel camera, a 13 megapixel ultra wide, and a 24 megapixel front facing selfie camera. It's even got a five megapixel macro lens on the back as well, which I took some pictures with and was surprised they turned out pretty well. You're not gonna be disappointed with the cameras on this thing. I Don't get wrapped around the axle over that. Is it pixel quality? No. Is it iPhone 12 quality? No. Is it really good? Yeah, I mean, you take perfectly good pictures with it. You're probably gonna miss out some on night mode, but I mean, realistically, who really takes those pictures anyway? And SIM card trays down here, it's neat. I, I was looking all over for it, and then I was like, oh yeah, it's a little red plate down there on the bottom. But yeah, so I've been using this for about a day now. Headphone jack on the bottom, USB-C. One thing I'm really excited about with this phone is the 65 watt charger. It recharges really fast which is pretty exceptional considering it has a 6,000 milliamp battery. I've been doing some gaming with this. I've got it like 144 hertz, max out refresh rate, max brightness all day long, and playing League of Legends in online. It's giving me about 10% battery drain per hour. So the fact that you can do 10% battery drain in an hour of online gameplay on a game like League of Legends is just ridiculous to me. And I'm gonna do more videos and stuff. This is really just kind of the my first impressions, the unboxing, so you can see what comes in the box, talk about my, my initial thoughts on the phone. I'm gonna have follow-up review content, but I've been carrying this around, and I gotta say, they've really impressed me with this phone. There is tons of power and performance in here. It looks cool, like it looks and feels cool. It's got the air triggers on the side too. When I first heard about the air triggers, I thought it was like buttons up top. That's not the case. It, if you remember the Google Pixel phones, like the Pixel 2, the Pixel 3, it had that squeeze feature on the side. Well, basically that's what they have in here. And the sensors are down here on the bottom. So when you're using the phone, if you squeeze it, which I have mine deactivated right now, but if you squeeze it, it'll like pull up Google Assistant or whatever. So that's fine. It also does some things like with the little AR features and stuff in the little box. I'll, I'll show you some video on that here in a minute. It's got like an AR comic book story game in there that's kind of neat. It shows you some of the cool AR characteristics. The AR selfie stuff is cool. You can like take selfies that puts like these little virtual helmets and stuff on you. And other than that, like I said, I've been really impressed with it. So just putting this into perspective, I have a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, which I paid $11.99 for, and also has the same Snapdragon 888 processor in it. And this one feels zippier, it feels faster, it feels more, more enjoyable to use, at least from a power and performance perspective. And I don't have as much heartburn because I paid $7.55 for this instead of $11.99. That's a huge, huge price difference. So, it's very interesting to me that finally they've got like 
a baseline storage model with a really good gaming phone from Asus, but you're not paying a ton of money for it. So I'm not paying $1,200 so I can play games. I'm not paying $1,000. You can pay you know, around seven, 800 bucks and get one of these things and it'll give you all the power and performance of the flagship Samsung phone. So I think Asus has done some things really well here. And also it's got the fingerprint sensor built under the screen. So you got the optical fingerprint sensor. As you can see, it works perfectly fine. It's also got facial unlock technology, so you can unlock it this way. No problems there whatsoever. Ta-da, easy peasy. So you're covered as far as biometrics. It's got all the latest and greatest stuff, and it won't break the bank. I mean, yeah, it's not cheap. This is not a three, four, five hundred dollar phone. This is still a you know, seven, eight hundred dollar phone, but you're still getting the power and the performance of a much more expensive phone at a better price. So. I think they've done some good things there. I don't want to go too far into this. There's a lot to cover in this phone. There are so many features in here, so much nuanced detail, especially with the Asus Republic of Gaming skin that's on Android, which it is running Android 11. But the funny thing is, though, is the phone came out in March and it's still got a January security patch update. So I'm not expecting a lot of security patch updates on here. I don't know how good the performance is as far as you know them giving you lots of regular security or software updates, but straight out of the gate, it runs smooth runs super fast. I haven't found any bugs and no issues. So I think that quality control wise, it looks like they did a good job putting it together. It looks like they did a good job customizing it for Android 11, which I'm really, really happy they did that and not Android 10. And the game performance is solid on here. Now, there are some things that I think they're going to have to work out because you can't play certain games like League of Legends on like 120 frames per second or 90 frames per second. It's not optimized for that, but my S21 Ultra is. So that is a little area of frustration because of course the Samsungs are gonna get optimized faster for a lot of these games like PUBG, Call of Duty. We're gonna get like probably the more maximum settings for some of the things, at least for now. But I'm hoping that's something that will trickle down and since the phone just came out, the developers need some time to get all that stuff online. But I've been loving playing games on it. The haptic feedback is incredible. The stereo speakers are incredible. And they did a good job. Like I really feel like I got my money's worth with this phone. So. More to come on that. Gonna have a full in-depth review on this later and go over some of the other stuff. But that's all I got now. I'm gonna cut myself off because I could keep talking about this phone for a long time. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments about the Republic of Gaming phone number five, then please feel free to sound off in the comments section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you can get updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.